Hello everyone, welcome back to another Woodworking Wisdom. What are we doing today, Jason? Today, Ben, what should we have a look at? Um, the, one of the mysteries and arts of life, the, the art of <laughs> steam or wood bending. Okay? So, what do we know then, Ben? Must have some questions and something. You know, we've yeah. done quite a lot of steam bending between us. Um, bit so, of a mystery. Bit of a problem there for most people. Why do you want a steam bend? Come on, what, what, why do you want a steam bend? What do we... Um, so it's producing shapes. So um, things like arm bows and top bows on, on our Windsor chairs here. Um, is to quickly um, put a shape on something without having to cut it from a solid piece. Um, what else would you use steam bending for? Now, you've just kind of hit on one thing. Now, you said about getting your shape. The other thing, you keep the structural strength for the material. Makes it stronger. If you cut this shape out of solid, good luck. I can't imagine it. I'm trying to cut it, it's going to be very weak, going to break. So by steam bending, you're keeping the grain structure running the length of the shape. And it's difficult to describe, but it continues around that curve. So obviously our window chairs are probably the most apparent answer to that question. What do you want to steam bend? But I've met people where we steam bend chair legs to shapes, do a steam bend for a boat building thing. So there's lots of different applications. Most people maybe not have got a... Uh, I'm just going to reach around and grab something a lot smaller. Goblet with a steam bent stem. Right? So I think you can probably see. We'll put it on the bench in a minute. You get a close-up. But it's a bit off now, isn't it? All right? So we can alter that. So that's more a bit of fun. But you can actually use steam bending for different applications. Problems with them, Ben. And what do we want to do with this? So there's two elements to steam bending, which are? And so you need heat and you need moisture. Okay, so fantastic. So we get heat and we have moisture in the material. You can heat that moisture up in the wood. It allows the fibers of the wood to become more elastic -y and they will slide and go past one another, mm -hmm. right? So it allows it to bend. So it's quite an important part that the, the material you're gonna try and bend has some moisture. So that's quite important. Next thing, what do you reckon we can what, bend? What sort of materials, what types of wood? Um, yeah, so what do you think? So what would, oh, well, this is like, now I'm going to, I'm going to apologise for the guys that are abroad. We're going to use English material because obviously that's what we're used to. Um, so we know over here we can bend ash, right? So our chairs, we've regularly used ash bows, back bows, regularly bent ash. It works nicely for it. It's probably the most common material in the UK that we can get. Beach. Traditionally, mm -hmm. beach used to be used a lot. Um, Erco, who are a famous chair maker in the UK, steam bend a lot of beach. They still do it. There's a great TV show on it a while back about how they steam bend. They use a lot of beach. We tried beach in here. It didn't work so well for us, but <laughs> it will work. Oak, that will bend. All right, but, all right, so then you get things like cherry, sweet chestnut. And that's why I apologise to the guys in the state because I know you also have a chestnut out there, but I don't know if it's the same. So sweet chestnut we get over here, it's, I know it as poor man's oak. It's very similar to oak in appearance, but softer, that will steam bend. Not horse chestnut, that will not bend. Don't even try with that. Another good one, which is a softwood, which is famous for longbows, Ben, was? Uh, you. So English yew wood. Very famous actually within Windsor chairs as well. Um, so that will bend. They even actually, and this used to surprise me, they would actually bend the branch on the tree whilst it was growing and tie it to the shape and almost grow it to the shape they wanted for the chair. Mm -hmm. They peg it up. So that's even quite a flexible one that you can even do that. So before they were going to cut the branch off, they might tie it up, leave it for six months, cut it off. Quite a weird and wonderful thing. So things with the material then, what can cause issues, do you reckon, Ben? What, what do you reckon we could have as... So things that we've noticed whilst we're, um, whilst we're bending, um, things like knots in the wood can... Um, that cause know, a problem, do you reckon? Yeah. <laughs> so as, we're, you know, as you're pulling it and forcing it really around a former or whatever shape it is you're using, something like a knot or um, where the, the grain changes direction around that knot can produce a little weak spot or um, a p t potential place for it to snap. So knots are something to look out for. Other thing, twisting the grain. And that's difficult to, to get over. If the, most trees will actually grow with a twist. They grow towards the light. So trying to get stuff that's nice and straight, not always easy to do. Um, we've had different material over the years where we've done the chair courses. 
quite amazing we can get one batch of wood that will bend perfectly the next look oh wow mm -hmm. i wish so getting the right kind of grain structure can play a part in it traditionally the wood for this would have been cut by a team of guys when they made windsor chairs it would have been split or riven with a fro so they actually split it down the grain so they want nice straight stuff they can split it parallel to the grain when we used to do the chair courses we used to use a lot of plank material first of all it's easier to get hold of gives us something actually quicker to work with as well time wise and that was so important so we'd obviously try and source material now with that material it needs to be green or wet if we can get it dry material will bend i will add that but green material is so much easier to work with for this so we actually had a friend locally who would source stuff for us we would then go and have a look and kind of it needs to be nice and straight he understood what we wanted he would cut them to the thicknesses we want fantastic all right so but also we've had stuff where middle of winter we collected a tree and it was frozen that would not bend for love of money we left it on the shelf three years later we managed to bend it when it was dry that's really weird how that frozen aspect changed the structure of trying to bend that wood okay mm -hmm. so the grain structure and all of those parts pay quite an important part all right so by cutting it from a plank like i said really it was that it was easier it was less effort from our point of view than trying to split it other thing we used to do to these, Ben, what do we do with these? You used to have that task. Of oh, so when we're machining them, um, when, you're, when you're getting your bits ready for going in the steam box, um, like Jason was saying, we chose the planks with the really straight grain, so the parallel straight grain running right the way through. And we would put them through the, well, once we'd cut them on the band saw or table saw, whatever saw we were using, cutting them to size, we'd cut them just slightly oversized, so then we could put them through the planer, so a planer thicknesser, um, and just skim the, the kind of surface off, so we've got a great surface before it even goes into the steamer. Um, that way it's going to save you a lot of time. Saved us a lot of time with the students, didn't it? A lot of effort from mm -hmm. having to try and hand plane all the bandsaw marks out off of the commercial mill, which tend to be deeper than the bandsaw we've got in here. That's right. So really did save. Um, and you know as well as I do, we've had certain comments over the year of, can we not speed this up? Can we make it easier? Okay. So the steam bending part, now we've hit on a few things there. We're going to look at a few other things as we go through this video. We're going to move a few things around in the room. So most important thing at the moment, materials, we've given you a list of what will bend, suitable things. Try and if you can have wet wood, all right? Fresh, green, that can be an important part. Even the time of year that is cut down can play a part in what happens. How long it's laid on the floor will play a part in how well it will bend. So if you have something that sat as a log on the floor for quite a while, it's dried out a little bit, it can get a fungus type infection is the best way I can describe it that will affect the structural strength of that material before we've even tried to bend it. I've got a couple of examples, I think, in here where we've had failures that I can show you, okay? So quite an important part to look at, all those sort of things. So other things we're gonna look at. So we've done materials, grain, wet, dry, equipment. What do we need to do this and bend? It can't yeah. just be that. <laughs> and bend it? No? Okay, no, no. all right. I didn't think it was going to be that easy. That's all right. So we've got, um, we've got a whole bunch of stuff that we want to show you guys. Um, um, yeah, you're going to need a lot of G-clamps is, is okay, one of them. A lot of clamps. Yeah. We need a former. Yeah. What do we put behind the work? We, we, we've made up a strap to yeah. reinforce it. So we've got the straps we're going to show you um, that go around the back of the piece of timber as we're bringing it around the former. And the most important part steam box the steam box and the actual steam all right so that's quite an important part so we're going to have a look at the steam book give you an idea what we did um our steam box while we sat here is quite elaborate i'm sorry it looks quite flash but actually it's still a basic thing mm -hmm. quite an quite an easy things to make so we're going to lose the chairs we're going to get the steam box in place so you can have a look we're going to go around there then we're going to have a look on the bench and go through how we bend them we're not actually going to do any steaming on this one. This is a part two part video. The second part's really going to cover that steaming aspect and how we bend it. Why not in this one? The safety thing, we've got to put the steam box on. It's got to be going for a couple of hours to actually bend the piece of wood that we're going to do. So we thought we'd do it as two part video. First one, we can look at a bit more in detail. Second part, obviously, going through the actual bending. So let's move the chairs. Okay, so we have the steam box. 
Ben, what have you got? You're on the front there. Let's just see if you can have a... I'm just going to wander around. Okay. So, newest me. We've got RG clamp rack. You can never have enough clamps, all right? Um, always going to need more clamps for this. Quite an important part to have lots of clamps. Not only do we use G clamps, we use some sash clamps. You'll see they'd normally be hung on the back of this. We made this really portable, so... First of all, we went into a show with it. But also nice with the students when we're doing the chair course, we could wheel all this in, do what we've just done there, wheel it in, set it up, get it going. When we're done with it, put it back out. But also meant it was one unit all together. We knew everything was on there, so everything from G clamps. So Ben, what have you got your side? Um, so over here, we've got our steam source. So uh, in here, we've got an industrial wallpaper stripper. Um, so quite a powerful one. Um, but we should say that this is for the scale for our Windsor chairs. Um, if you're doing smaller projects, um, you may not need that as a, as a, a steam source. Um, but yeah, we've got our leather gauntlets there to, um, you know, to handle anything hot coming out the other side, adjacent side. Um, so just above, while well, we're in that shot, just above mm -hmm. there, I think, now I'm just going to poke in here with a bit of wood, look. This one here, we have some Celotex insulation. It's the best shot I can show you where that is. So I know it is there, okay? Um, we insulated the box. That's a real important part to go over, okay? So on a steam box project. So certain things, now, if we just move things about a little bit, I've got to swing it all the way around, Ben. We're going to come right around to there. Nice on wheels. My aim now is to show you where we put the wood in a little bit. Okay, how about that? Get to there, all right? So... I'm just going to move my body around the back, come round to there. So we need to get the timber into this, so we need an opening. Now, Ben's already said the size of the steam box is going to relate to what you're working on. So actually in here, to give you an idea of size, we're just going to pull this out. There you go. All right, so quite a long piece of material. So that's one of the arm bows or the back bows we use for the Windsor chairs. It has to be able to fit in there. You've got to be able to get airflow all the way around it. So we'll do the aspect of pick it back up, put it in. You, you can almost see it suspended in mid-air now, because actually inside the box, there is actually some pegs that run across, they're wooden, mm -hmm. so it supports it, okay? So quite an important part. Ben, just grab the torch off the bench behind you, look. There's just that, oh, that ball light. Yeah, Let's just, just see if we can get into there. Um, I'm just going to press the camera because we're getting that come up, okay? Now our steam box, when we made it, we made it out of plywood, all right? So this is done with marine ply, so that'll take most of those pressures, the glue they use will be better for that than a standard plywood. When we glued it together, what did we use as a glue bank? Can you remember when we glued the box together? Uh, was the, the expanding, the... Um, so we used a polyurethane, polyurethane glue. So a few weeks back we did a thing on glues. Now, why not use PVA? So uh, PVA is a polyvinyl plastic. Uh -huh. Whichever way you look at it, it's a plastic type glue. So with the heat we're getting out here, it will soften that. It will start to deteriorate quicker, so the polyurethane glue is better. We also use stainless steel screws because this is actually the Mark II box, Mark I, the screws rusted out That's from right. the heat build up. Okay, so really important part. Next thing inside here, when we've made the box, what did we line the inside with, Ben? What did we do? Um, so that is a, an epoxy resin. So we brushed that on like a paint. So we actually coated the whole of the inside of the box. So we made the box with one, I think it was the top off coated the three sides inside first of all and the pegs mm -hmm. then when we came to put the top on it we glued that on we actually put the uh, epoxy on there as well first and then turned it on so if I look at the top of this carefully inside there's a few dribbles of glue dripping down a little bit but nothing drastic but it's epoxy coated totally in there all right so with that epoxy that we've got in there, it helps really protect it. it actually, where Ben shined the light, looked quite shiny. We've had a look this morning. It's quite nice to have a look at it. Still in really good condition. Hasn't actually deteriorated too much in there, okay? So that's our entrance hole for getting the wood in and out. We also have, Ben, which you've got your side, just where the clamps are. No, down on, just on the rack in here, oh, yeah. there should be the door. So our door, just put that back on and off. It has a handle. Great technique there because now we've got a cloth that helps seal it. Oops. We've got a strap we can pull on and off on. We didn't put a metal handle because it gets hot. Mm -hmm. So we've got canvas type strap, uh, part of a ratchet strap, just clamped in. When we opened it, we always tend to open it. Oh, 
and it fits nice, I'd always open it pulling down. And that's a safety thing about which way that steam's going, okay? So that fits quite nicely. On the bottom end of here, so I'm just going to possibly, I think we're going to go round again. So which yeah. way should we go? I'll drive round here because this is worse <laughs> than a supermarket trolley. But, goes there. I'll bring it back to me a little bit. I can see we're going to speed this up. Oh, okay. Now where Ben is, we have the inlet valve, which is the black pipe, which I can probably point coming around here, which comes up in. That's where the steam goes in. In behind it, you can see a white pipe. Ben's got the kettle. He's going to put some tea on. <laughs> so, quite an interesting part on here. We've got that white pipe. What's that? That's the drain hole. You've got to remember, if you're putting water in, it's got to come out. So the steam is actually going in. It will recondense back into water. It will drain back out. So you need somewhere for that water to come out. Also in the box we have here, there is a slight taper coming up because steam will rise. So up towards the door is where more of the steam will rise up to, which means the water end is this end for the drain. So quite an important part. And the body of this, Jason, is at a slight angle, is that so right? So slight angle, so it'll drain a little bit. And again, we've also got those plugs inside to help support the battens, really important. And obviously other things that we've already said, the insulation, why? Really brought that heat up. Um, to give you an idea, how hot are we getting in this? Steam is produced at 100 degrees centigrade. So we are producing that kind of heat. The more we can retain that heat within the box, the better the steaming process will be, the easier it is to bend the wood. And that's something we definitely learned. The first steam box we ever had was just a plywood box screwed together, put the wood in it, it worked, but they didn't bend, not properly. We then tried covering it with a blanket, kind of helped. Could we insulate it, really go for it? Now we also tried a while back, we lined it with a piece of plastic drain pipe, <laughs> soil pipe. I love the reaction. What happened? Come on, what did it do? Um, so it, it melted. Yeah, we, we melted, melted it. it. Not only did we melt it, actually melted around the bits of wood that we were trying to get in and out, and it became a real problem. Now, we did this as part of one of the courses. It was not good. We couldn't get the wood in and out, and it was embarrassing from our point of view. So plastic pipe with the temperature we were getting up to didn't mm -hmm. quite take it, all right? So kind of prefer to have our box with the epoxy so much better as Ben's already said you can have wallpaper stripper you could have kettle you could have boiler tea urn the old-fashioned boys actually used to have a wood burner in the workshop connected to a water boiler above which generated the steam into the steam box a little bit tricky okay now whatever you go with remember steam is hotter than water so go careful when you open it Make sure you've got, so we said about the gloves, so if we're taking anything in or out and we all see in part two and we have a glove on to reach into that box, because if not, it will burn. Mm -hmm. It gets incredibly hot and the steam will come out. Um, make sure you're not leaning over the front of it when you open the door, because the steam comes up again. It doesn't have steam the glasses up, okay? <laughs> quite, a, quite a tricky thing to get right. Just remember, so you'll see in part two where I actually go to open the door, I actually almost kneel down and open it, so I'm dropping my face away from that opening. Right, right, so think about that. You're also building up a bit of pressure in there with that steam. It's almost like a pressure cooker. So think about that when you open it, it's going to come out, all right? Anything else, Ben? Anything else on there? Oh, okay. I was just going to say, do you remember when we first coated this with epoxy and then we, um, we did our first trial run with it and it built up a lot of pressure inside the chamber? Which was why? What was the one problem? <laughs> When we uh, it our it, drainage hole. I'm yeah. glad he'd remembered. The yeah, drain okay. hole in the front here with the white pipe, when we brushed the epoxy on, it sealed it up. Okay, so we didn't have that. So we had to pipe a pipe up through just to break that seal. But yeah, very true. If you don't have, so likewise, and that's something to give you that relevance of, if we don't have a drain hole to allow that water to come back out and an access hole for the steam a little bit, um, things will definitely go pop when you open the door a little bit. Mm -hmm. So think about the pressure build up inside, quite an important part, okay? So our uh, steam box, yeah, it looks quite flash and elaborate. We've got wallpaper stripper, we've got a plywood box inside, we've lined it with epoxy, we've insulated it. We've gone to town a little bit now. I will say our box on here, we used to put six pieces of material inside it to bend. So we would do a session with six pieces. So most of you, you might not be doing that. You might only need one or two. My little goblet that we showed you, okay, it's back over here again. Right? 
we don't need this for that. It's too big, gonna to take too long to get up to pressure, so you could have something a lot smaller, okay? So that's the relevance. Think about the size you might be making the steam box for the project you're doing. If you're going to regularly use it and want to use it more often, then yes, you need to start thinking about the epoxy, the insulation, all those things. If you're doing one project, probably get away with it. Mm -hmm. All right, just in mm -hmm. a box. At the end of it, you end up throwing it away. So think about how you're making that steam box, all right? So we've already said, so we've out the things we need for this. We need a former, bending straps, all right, clamps, steam box, blocks, all right? So at the moment, we've done the steam box. So we're now going to look at the setup that we'd have on the bench. So I'm going to move, and we're going to wheel this back out of the way. We're going to bring the bench in. So then, Ben, materials. We said we've got different things. We've played with different woods. Yeah. When we started, we'd play these up. We're going to have a little bit of a closer look. Now, I've got one here that I know is not very good, and I've explained to you. So let's have a look. So what do you think is... So, yeah, what we're looking for are some certain things when we get going. Um, if we come on to our overhead camera here, um, you can see... Right along, hopefully you can see on this piece, the grain is really nice and straight running right the way along. And on this one, we've got just a little bit creeping out of the edge there. Um, what we're looking for, we want these to be nice and straight, nice and straight grained. Um, and not to, um, you know, I can feel a difference between these two pieces of wood and this one. Um, and you can see a very slight, if I bring it right up to camera, you can see there's a bit of discoloration and it feels light. Um, I think maybe, what could be up with that, Jason? In reality now, and this is, a, I hate describing this, that's what I class as dead wood. That's been set on the floor for quite a while in the timber yard before it's been planked. That's nearer the outside edge of the tree where the sapwood is. So that sapwood banding normally would probably bend a bit easier, but a fungus will get into there, start to deteriorate it, so it loses that structural strength. Now you do a beautiful thing with looking at these, where we've got that grain section running nice and straight. Trying to get it both ways if we can. That's it. Not always possible. Yeah. Try and get the grain so it's straight as you can out of, oh, so you need to be a bit picky. We were very lucky with the guy that used to source some stuff for us because he'd keep his eye out for stuff for us. Mm -hmm. So they are nice and straight grain on both orientations. If you get it just on one orientation running down, you've got to look at where it's going to go into the strap to line it up with in reality where you're bending it. So if you've got a bit of cross grain, we've got a couple we'll look at, we'll go through in a minute how they are. All plays a part in it. So That's other right. things we did with bits of timber, Ben. So these have been roughly cut to shape either on your band saw, your table saw, um, and these are just over inch and a quarter. So we potentially cut them just over that and then we put them through the plane of thickness or that inch and a quarter. Um, another thing we've done, if we again come onto our overhead camera, you can see there's a very slight angle we've put on the end of that. Okay, so it's just a little five degrees. If we yeah, if you yeah, use we get a, a square in there. There you go. I don't know if it'll really show, but I mean, to give you an idea, that's how far we are out of square. I don't know mm -hmm. if we can bring that round. That's it, you can okay, see that We are gap. quite a long way off a of square. Five degrees, doesn't sound much, but mm -hmm. it can make a lot of difference. Now, Ben, you did that. Why did we do a five degree thing? What was the... So the five degree on the end, as we're coming around a semicircle, what actually we're doing is we're potentially compressing the inside and stretching the outside of that piece of timber. Um, and we actually find that it almost comes back to, um, to, to 90 degrees um, once it's been in that, in that former. Um, and that has a lot to do with the way that we hold the blocks on the strap, which we're going to look at in a minute. And sometimes if, it's, um, if we haven't got that little bit of clearance on the end, the, the blocks on the strap pinch on and they can start to snap um, or, or split up through the grain on the timber. So um, we've, just through trial and error, uh, which, sort of found that. Which you've made the, the magic comment where there was split. Okay, so we get a lot of pressure coming back up through that bow. So from the, the scenario of, we each had sort of tasks when we made the chairs. So I'd have to shape the top bows and the arm bows with them. There's nothing worse than a big split in an arm bow. Even worse in a top bow, because is how it tapered to fit into the top of the chair. So the less damage in a, you did to it and that stage before we even got to it to do any shaping the better and it actually was quite a ball changer thing for us where we we got that 
get rid of that split just by adding that five degrees. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to look at obviously the orientation of which way it went into the jig. The five degrees actually went in the opposite way to what most people think. Nearer to the tapers coming back to me at the moment, that's the way it would go into the jig. So when it pulled round, brought it back round. Quite an amazing thing. Yeah. So really to change things a bit. So a material thing at this point, ideally green. Not always possible. The ones we use for part two, it's quite interesting. We've got some of the bends, actually, the videos we've kind of worked around. So some of the bends we did for part two, we're going to use now, which we did it, we did the bending before we did this. Okay, right? It, it's just a minor thing, but it's actually quite good. From our point of view, I wasn't sure if this material was going to bend. Now, we haven't said anything about failures yet. Now, we said about that dead wood. Um... These, I don't know, Ben, you might have to have a look, right? Yeah, I'll put them up Just to hold one through. or the other. Well done, that'll be easier, right? I think if I put my hand up in here, you can look at that. Just separate them apart a little bit. So this is due to the fact where it's a little bit dead as a material. Mm -hmm. um, that's a spaghetti break, which actually also suggesting maybe too much time in the steambook. Now, we haven't mentioned time yet. We're going to look at that in a second, okay? But you can get that material. Also, the fact of Ben, you said something there. You've got the same metal material I've got there. This is lighter. Mm -hmm. Hasn't got that weight to it. All right? And that's quite an interesting part. How heavy the material weighs will give you a guide, a little bit of how much moisture is in it. But green wood will be better. Okay? So we can get that, that problem off. So let's lose our wood a minute. We then said about the straps. Okay? So, where are my straps? Now, Steph, I think you've got a picture for us of the original setup we had. And I'll talk away for it a little bit. You can see on there, we've got two turn wooden handles on the end of the straps. The straps are a lot blacker and darker there. They are actually old bandsaw blades. Um, and I mean a six inch bandsaw blade that we would cut in half with an angle grinder and a disc. We would chisel the teeth off. We'd then put two handles on that we turned on the end and we would physically pull the shoes to shape with the G-clamps and a number of us. There is another picture of us doing that, which you'll see in part two. Quite an amazing thing to actually try and pull it round, clamp it in place. Now, by using a high steel carbon bandsaw blade, what most of us would have, yeah, it was easy to get, it's flexible. But it also caused another problem. Which was Ben, can you remember? I used to get little black spots. Oh, uh, black spots all over the outside of the bow. And if they would go in two or three mil. It's almost like a rust thing that's affecting with the with moisture in the steam box. Uh, it, it, and we'd have to clean them out. Mm -hmm. It looked horrendous. So how to try and get rid of them? So what did we go for? Um, so these are stainless steel straps. So yeah. stainless steel. Now the problem from stainless steel, it's not as flexible as high carbon steel. Actually, if you bend it, it holds the shape. High carbon steel will actually spring back. So to make these safer, first of all, Ben said about the blocks. Let's have a look at those. Let's focus on that and we'll work down for the strap. So you can explain it. I'll try and hold it, Ben. Okay. So we've got a, a wooden block here. Um, we've got three bolts going through right through the strap. It needs to be really strong because we are putting some pressure on these. And this is just a bit of um, chainsaw starter cable. Um, so it's a braided cord. Again, really, really strong. It needs to be. Um, it needs to stand up to a, a bit of punishment when we're um, when we're. Where have we got the recess? What, what was that for? Remember? Okay, yeah. So um, as this, um, as we're pulling that round, we're obviously bringing a force this way. As the strap comes around like that, it needs a little bit of clearance, or it's going to snag on the top of the the block there. So that just gives us a little bit of um, kind of swing room, if you will, for that um, that starter cable. Okay. So with stainless steel being more brittle, we put two straps together. Mm -hmm. So two bits of stainless steel together, bolted, you, as Ben's already said, bolted through. Look, by having two, if one breaks, it's unlikely they're both going to break at the same time. So it became a fail safe. We did have a bandsaw blade when we did one of them actually snap halfway through being pulled round. It's quite scary at the time. So yeah. we worked out two straps is definitely going to be safer. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a pen line on the back here, which tells us the center point we're putting it into the former. And you can see this is going to pull around. Well, again, we've got six straps, I think, like that. Um, they're all made the same length, same size. The piece of wood for the top bow and the arm bow, we made the same size. When we first started, no, we had two sizes. Why? 
okay? Two sides just makes it complicated. You've got to go to the box, get the right piece of wood out, get the right size strap, get the right size former. Make it simple. One piece of wood, one strap, one former didn't matter, okay? So it just meant the fact we didn't have that problem of inch doing it. So we have our strap, formers. What are they? They're what you're going to bend around. So I'm going to get one of them out of here. So our former, we'd make them out of plywood. So we have our curve. Our strap, when it would come in, would drop into here. So lots of holes in here to get G-clamps in. So we can lock things in place. Centre one's really important. Curved bit on the back of the board made it uh, more accessible so you didn't walk into the corner where you're trying to set it up. How to make your curve bit? We cut the shape out initially, so we'll draw out and work out what we wanted. We also have a centre line coming down through. So we'll cut it out, bandsaw or jigsaw. Then I'd screw them together. Use a router or a bearing cutter, whiz round, follow the pattern totally. Mm -hmm. Glue the next one on, trim off the excess, go around with the bearing cutter. So this is made up of three layers of 18mm plywood. Nicely stacked together. Once we've got the three layers, then we drilled the holes out using bimetal hole saws from either side. Fix it onto a baseboard. Now our baseboard also has a cutout, which will say the relevance of, and a holding pattern that will fit into the base. So these are quite interchangeable. For the snow, if you're going to do this for a steam bend operation, most people want to make a chair. You might make two or three over a period of time. Could be worth setting up and doing this once and then having those bows. So it makes it interchangeable. If you're building a steam box, it's nicer to put it on and do three or four than it is to do one and then get it out six months later and do another one. Mm. So we had everything quite interchangeable. We've said about the straps pulling around and how they pull in. I think we can just see where that goes we're going to see a lot of that as we go through the videos for the, definitely the next one how that comes in that cord we said about has to have clearance to come up over the board so we've got that recess so it stops it pinching on the edge and being cut through yep. lots of different things on there all right so so far we have our former our strap we said about when we first started we'd actually pull this physically round by hand with that photo we've shown you okay oh, it was hard work um I can remember doing one bow and there were six of us trying to do the shape. So quite a physical thing. Certain members of staff wouldn't play nicely. They'd use their elbows and try to <laughs> dig them in my ribs. <laughs> it wasn't you, Ben, don't worry. All right. So we then decided we'd make a winch thing. Now, I don't know if we come to the overhead. If I go to there. Now, Ben's got the handle end. If I gently slide through, you can see there. So we've got our winch. We're going to come back. Now, the baton nearest down there, just put your hand on here. Look, this bit. Mm -hmm is gonna go in the vice on the opposite side of this bench, which is why we use this bench. It's an old bench we have. Um, it's gonna get beaten up a little bit, I suppose, over a period of time. So that baton will go into the vice he's got his side. If I hold him there a minute. Drop his hand or lift him up, slide it in. So that clamps in place nicely. I'm just gonna move the strap over. It's gonna come that way a little. Okay. From there, you can see I've got that lovely cutout in here that sits over the board there. If I undo my vice as well, everything locks in place nicely. So the only pressure here is pushing in underneath onto that former, stops it lifting up and folding. Well, on a winch, we've got the two strings, which we can actually wind things in and out, pull it round accurately. We have two nylon wheels in here we turned and made little groove they've got little bearings inside so all dedicated for doing this it makes life so much easier um the winch thing and i can't remember i think ben had this as an idea i think he'd seen it somewhere i think the uh, mike morley's book on right the wind there is a windsor chair book out absolutely stunning as an idea up until that point there was this whole Almost rushing, wasn't it? We get a piece of wood out and you're trying to yeah. fight and pull it round. Was the yeah. winch thing? Me and Ben occasionally have had to do this just by ourselves. So I'd be here, I get the bit of wood and put it in, and you'll see it in the video. Just gently wind it in. It's not a race. You've got quite a bit of time. You've got more time than most of us think. If you do the thing of you rush it and try and bend it, you're not getting the fibres time to react and slide past one another to create that shape. So quite an important part. You actually thought we'd go around. We put our clamps in, gently pull this round. Build your shape, working from, retighten, actually get to that finished article. And it, it, it's been a real learning curve when we did them. Now you've got one down near you as a former under the bench there with G clamped in place so we can give you an idea of where it is and what happens. You can put that up on 
okay so we've got it with the g-clamps in once this has been in there and we've left it to dry so normally if we were doing this as one of the courses we'd leave it overnight to dry we come in the next day and we have some high tensile fencing wire we bent it to make hooks so these will hook in either side I can then undo the G clamp all right so this is one we did the other day I can take my clamp off once it's allowed to cool down I can take it out but I need something to stop it opening up because until it's dried out as a material it will move which is quite an amazing thing so you've got to remember you've got to allow it to dry some of these bows and i didn't think this stuff was going to bend this is the stuff we've done for the part two of the video real tight grain round here look at that but they bent perfectly absolutely beautiful and this stuff is actually dry as a material we've had it sat on the shelf for three years since lockdown began and everything else so really nice ones now while we're still looking at bows what we got now these are out the same batch Ben went over characteristics of materials. Now, I don't know in here, there's a tiny little pen knot. Mm -hmm. Look what it does. Can you see that flare on that material? Look at the shape the other side. Just from a tiny little knot, it creates a resistance patch, flares this wood up through here, means we've got a little bit of cleaning up. By machining stuff, so much easier to machine up and clean up after than actually having to clean up all the deep bandsaw grooves. Yep. So it can play a part. Uh, angle bits we said about. Tape a little bit, so taper point, high points towards the middle, lower points here, but almost back to square. But very few cracks now in the end here, which is great. Real cross grain one, different shape. So top bow and arm bow, two different shapes. You can see the difference possibly on there. We might try probably over there, I think. Then you can have slightly different so we've got right, a, bring it down a, a bit flat on this one this has got more curve more constant so this is back bow that's arm bow that Ben's got so different shapes but same size piece of wood and we're building up a nice collection now <laughs> this one very cross-grained again but darker material so this is nearer the center of the tree um, this is out that finer grain ash that we've looked at earlier that I said got that bit of rot to it now when we took this out, it's flared up a little bit. The fibres have lifted just a tiny bit. So thin super glue is fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so before I'd even take it out of the former, I might actually put the glue in or we take it out, stand it in the vise and we do each stage and we put a G-clamp on that. I expect if you look carefully, you can see the compression marks of where the G-clamps have been. Let it set. Don't spray it with an activator. It goes a yellow colour. It's hard to clean out. Yeah. Do you think this has got a certain amount of moisture in it because it's come out of the steam box the day before? Go careful where you get your eyes and everything else because the fumes coming off this can be quite intense. They really make your eyes stream a bit. Mm -hmm. So put a little bit on, clamp it up, make sure you stand back a little bit. All right. So again, not bad. That's usable, even though we've got that little bit, of, little bit of damage on the outside. Nothing yeah, too bad on yeah, there. So the these are the ones that we up. did for the part two of this video. Now we've already said about failures a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to bring these in. That'd be good just to lay off on here. All right, this was two that we did. Real fine grain stuff. Possibly out that stuff with a bit of rot. It hasn't got the same weight as the other ones we just looked at. Didn't bend. And I mean, not only did it not bend, it got nowhere near bending. Mm. I mean, literally, we were off out here. We weren't anywhere around. We were pretty straight at the time. And it just, you'll get what they class spaghetti bend. Some of that might be oversteaming. You can oversteam, you can understeam. As a general rule, Ben, you got any tips on what, how long it takes? What do you reckon? Um, so generally we work with an hour per inch and we were working with inch and a quarter. Um, so we would usually go for that kind of hour and a half, maybe two hours. And we would always have, we had the luxury of having six pieces of timber in there at once. So if we put the first one on and we weren't getting that um, great bending, perhaps it had been understeamed. Um, we could just leave it for another half an hour and come back and do the rest. Um, so yeah, you can over and under steam, but the general rule 
is an hour per inch of thickness. And would that change with, um, you know, like a seasoned uh, piece of timber or a wet? Okay, so green material is going to take less time because you've got the moisture in the wood already. With the steaming, if it's dry material, you've got to get the moisture in there to help it bound. Kiln dried material is going to be more problematic again because you tend to case harden it by kiln drying it. So, do you have that aspect? Yeah, definitely. Other thing that's going to play a part in that, what the wood is. Ash, beech, cherry, oak, they're all very slightly different. They will take different bending, different times, how long they're in there, all those sort of things. But as we said, you can get over, over steaming, you can get under. Uh, over steaming suggests a spaghetti break, which is it's quite, quite spectacular, actually. I mean, we're, uh, maybe a, a resin project to do with this one <laughs> later now on that, that break and a bit. Right, that could be good, couldn't it? I mean, we, we could start off a whole thing of... I wonder if we could sell them as resin project. I mean, yeah, okay. right, right. so, got that whole sort of scenario of you've got to look at. Now, next and most important thing, all right? First of all, think about, we've already said, the heat build-up and everything else. Think about what you're doing, where you are, get your gloves and everything else. Don't be put off if things go wrong. We did six the other morning to test if these were going to work. Two of them, straight off, broke, straight away. And I can remember going, and we've got to do this on Wednesday or Thursday <laughs> to do a video, and we've got to have some wood. <laughs> Where are we getting this from? The next four, fine. So it's just that sort of scenario. You're going to get something as a failure rate. I will guarantee it. I love doing the steam bending. I know when we used to do this with the Windsor Chair course and the students, it used to create such hype about actually trying to do this steam bending. Um, in the middle of summer, I don't know if it's quite it's so enjoyable walking into a room with a steam box going, the windows all steamed up and everything else. By the time you'd left here, the sweat was dripping and everything else. Uh, good for the soul or cleans the pores out, but <laughs> it was nice to get out of the room. But we used to do this three or four days over that week, right? So six bands per session just to build up good stock. They wouldn't all go right. We'd have to do a few repair jobs. We had certain courses where, I don't believe, we just cannot bend it for love or money. Going by all those little things we've done. Laminated, you know, they've got the steam box, we've done the insulation, we've got the time, we've got the... Not bending, why? Certain bits just don't. It won't work for you, okay? But it can be so enjoyable. Yeah. There's nothing better than, and I mean... Um, look at this! I mean, this... <laughs> let's see if that can go, right? Very let's sad, do an sorry. overhead step. Let's have a... Right? I'm going to wheel this in, look, okay? Look at this for a bend, all right? Now, Craig came and saw this earlier, and I will say, we cannot actually use the words that he described this with. <laughs> all right? We, this is, may not be made for kids, but we can't have words like that, okay? <laughs> so what I'm getting at is, you can get some really good ones. And that's a real great feeling of going, oh, wow. Yeah. All right? So, what do you reckon? Everyone's going to have to do some steam bending at some point. You always want to make something that's maybe got a curve or a shape in. It doesn't have to be a chair. It could be something as silly as that little goblet. I mean, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, woohoo. <laughs> All right. I know, it makes me nervous as well. Um, I did one of these. I finished it to do this for, all right, and I dropped it, and it broke. All right, so I try and be a little bit careful, all right? But, so you can steam bend something like goblet stem, Chair backs, it's got different uses. Yeah. Yeah. So, Ben, anything else you want to add? Anything else you think that we've I missed? I think we're about there. Like Jason said, um, you know, don't give up if you have a couple of breakages. Try a different plank, try a different, um, you know, a different piece of timber. Um, they can be really unpredictable. Even um, the same timber that come from the same plank, one bit will, will, um, will bend and one bit won't. So just be a bit um, persistent and give it another go if, if the first one cracks on you. All right. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. Part two, we're going to go over the aspect of actually using the steam box, heat, bending, doing that process. So hopefully you'll tune in for that. Hopefully this one's been a bit of an eye-opener on what's involved, what you might need. Nothing too drastic. So we'll see you again soon. Thanks very much.